Hey there everybody, this is Franco and this video is going to be about using Microsoft Visual Studio Code to edit your Fusion 360 post processors. If you've seen my old video on post processor editing, most of that information is still applicable, but rather than using Notepad++, now you can use Microsoft Visual Studio Code, which is a much more powerful environment, especially with the uh, plugin that the Autodesk people wrote for it. So long story short, what you have here on the screen is I have a CNC program on the right. I have the post processor on the left. This is actually the Centroid post processor that I use. And what happens is as you click around on uh, different lines in the CNC program, what the uh, editor does is it takes you to the line in the post processor that generated that code. So this is really useful when you're trying to uh, figure out how a post processor works. This like really accelerates the process. So here's an example. So if I click right here on the tool call, you'll see that this line is highlighted, right? Block T plus tool format, blah, blah, blah. So let's just say we want to do something silly. We want, let's make a silly change. Let's, instead of it, instead of calling this T3, let's call it T dx3 right so I just I just changed the post processor this thing up here just alerted me that it changed and what happens is I can just go here and say file save what it does is it reposts the file and now it it shows the change you can see now it says instead of t3 it says tx3 and of course I want to change that and fix it so let me get rid of that x and what I can do, instead of pressing File Save, I can come here to uh, Group 1, and I can just say Save. And now it's all better. I'm not going to get into all the details of how to read the code and the post processors and all that, but I am going to show you how to get started with all of this. So the first thing you need to do is go to this web page and I'll put a hyperlink in the description of this video for this web page and on this web page you can download all of the existing post processors that are available but up here is this link it says manual you want to click on that and when you click on that it's going to open up this manual which uh, the people at Autodesk uh, are continuing to update they're making it better and better this is great this document is really good, and uh, kudos to the gentleman that is, is putting this together. I, I actually met him. He's a really nice guy, super intelligent, knows everything there is to know about the uh, post-processor environment here in Autodesk, so uh, really cool people. But anyway, you want to get this document, and you want to look at it. And uh, the thing that you want to zoom in here right now is the instructions here about editing post processors. So if you go to this section two, what they're going to do is they're going to start telling you what you need to do to work in this environment. Um, the first thing you need is it's called Visual Studio Code. This is the free editor that Microsoft uh, developed and this is used for writing all kinds of different kinds of programs for different sorts of platforms. But you want to get online and uh, download this and install it. So that's the first thing you need to do. It doesn't take really long. Just get that on your computer. Then what you need to do is you need to click on this hyperlink right here and install the uh, plugin. And when you click on this hyperlink, it's going to bring you here. And you'll click install. And what it will do is it will load up the plugin to the uh, Visual Studio code that makes you know this this whole thing work here for the Fusion 360 post processors. So you need to do that. You need to get that going. Um, next, what you have to do is you want to go back here, and I would encourage you to read through this whole document. But if you scroll down to is it 
Okay. You need to tell the plugin where your post processors are. Um, that's important. So this, this section tells you how to do that. And let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. And okay, you can press the browse button to search for post. Okay. So the first time you try to post process something, it's not going to find the, the executable. So I'll just show you here. This is going to be a little confusing because I've already done all this, but if you press F1, this help thing pops up. If you type in HSM, uh, you'll, you'll get these functions. This, this one here, post process, this actually generates, triggers the post processing function. The first time you do this, it's not going to know where the post processor executable is for Fusion 360. And it's going to give you an alarm. It'll tell you you need to go find it. And what you'll do is you're going to follow this file path right here to go find it. And this can be a little bit confusing because of this, this thing right here. Most of this is going to be pretty easy to find. You want to, you want to show hidden files. That's one thing. You want to show that. So check that box. But when you get here to where it says production, you're going to see all these different weird folders. You need to find the one that has uh, applications in it. So not all of them have applications in it. A subfolder called applications. You won't find it. So you got to click through them until you find the one that has applications in it. Then CAM360. And then you can come down and find the post executable for Fusion 360. So you need that. And this is all spelled out in the instructions, but I'm just kind of going through it quickly. The other thing you need to do is here on 231, you need to, let's see, download um, this file. It's called, first you, you need to download this export CNC file to VS Code. So what this will do, so you can just copy this over here, press F1. Paste that in there. Oh, let's see here. I lied to you. Let's go back to the directions. Here we go. You can do this by running the download. This is what you paste in right here. I lied. Sorry. Copy that. Come over here. Put that in there. And when you run this, what this is going to do is it is going to give you a special post processor. And what that post processor will do is let you take a CNC program, whatever it is, whatever program you're working on, you'll post process it. And you will choose this thing, export CNC file to Visual Studio. You'll choose that. You'll post process it. And then what it will do is over here under the CNC selector, this is all like your boilerplate code for just testing post processors. But what it will do is it'll, it'll actually put your program here under the custom section. And, uh, you may have to hit refresh after you you do this but when you press refresh whatever you posted out of fusion should show up here so this is great so you can actually post your own code through your post processor and check the output if you don't want to do that there are you know generic um, generic tool paths that you can work with but i think most people want to do something they're familiar with so you'll want to do that um, other things that you probably want to check out here is file preferences settings and there's settings for the text editor there's settings for what they call the workbench and 
there's all sorts of things here that might, you know, be useful. I think, um, let's see here. You, I would just read through them because there's some uh, check boxes here that can change the way uh, the system works while you're working through it. And I'm trying to find one here in particular that I think is useful. Well, there, there was one here that controls what it does when you edit a file. Basically what it does is as soon as you, uh, as soon as you change something, it will uh, reload the file. And I can't remember exactly where that is. I'm pretty sure it's under Workbench. And uh, I would check it. I can't remember where it's at. I'm sorry. But it's in here. But there's also um, settings under Extensions, like here's HSM Post Utility. There are a bunch of settings here that you might want to look at too, like this one. Um, post processing will occur as soon as the CNC file is selected. Post on save. These are all things that uh, I would recommend that you look at. All right, so um, there's a real quick, super fast overview of this. A couple of more, or a few more things that I'll point out. This document, um, it actually goes into a lot of things. It explains uh, JavaScript. It explains different sections of the post processor. Um, I would, I mean, this is a good one to print out and just read. And I also do believe that they are uh, editing this thing fairly often. So, I, you know, you want to check back. One last thing that is really helpful, in my opinion, there's another post processor that I would recommend. I'll show it to you. It's called Dumper Dump. And Dumper Dump is pretty cool. So when you pick Dumper Dump and Post, this is what you get. This is actually going to generate the intermediate file that um, Fusion 360 passes to the post processor. And as you get into uh, the different aspects of editing your post processor, you're going to want to come in and, and look at this and see the different commands and the different parameters and all the, you know, the things that Fusion 360 is passing to the post processor. And what I will do a lot of times if I am, if I am searching for something and I want to see where it is in the post, what I'll do is I'll edit an operation. Let me see if I can do this. And wh whatever it is I'm looking for, I'll just put in some really obscure number, you know, 0.1978, something like that, right? I'll put in some weird obscure number, and then I'll post it out. And then I'll go to the file and I'll search for that weird obscure number that I typed in. And uh, what it will do is it will help me see what the, uh, the parameter is that's working with that piece of data. So that can be really handy too when you're, you're searching for something. All right, well, I know that was probably a lot of information that probably uh, may have been a little overwhelming, but take some time and look into this. This is really cool. And if you're into editing post processors or if you want to learn how to edit post processors, this is, this is definitely the best way to do it. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.